So if we look at this uh, analysis piece in The Guardian, uh, The Guardian view on Israel and Hezbollah, the war is already here. The subtitle says, de-escalation through escalation is not a strategy, just wishful thinking. Of course, the article touches on the fact that strategy, if it is to push uh, Hezbollah to back down through escalating the attacks, that may not work, partly because the humiliation of Hezbollah through the device attacks will make it harder for them to back down without losing credibility, as well as on the other side, popular pressure on Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, to be tougher on Hezbollah. Let's have a look at the Washington Post on that note. Uh, this article cites some polling from the Israeli Democracy Institute back in August and it says 67% of Israelis at that time called for a more aggressive approach on Hezbollah and 47% went so far as to support an assault deep into Lebanon including targeting infrastructure. So if uh, de-escalation through escalation is the plan. Well, certainly there's popular support in Israel for a high level of intensity, and it's not necessarily likely that'll make easy for Hezbollah to back down. Now, of course, Joe Biden has also continued to call for a de-escalation, but with only months to go before he leaves the White House, his chances of success that seem to be uh, well, disappearing into thin air. Absolutely, yes. So this article in the New York Times yesterday said that the president is starting to acknowledge that a ceasefire, a hostage exchange deal is looking less and less likely before he leaves office in just a few months' time. This article also provides reports, uh, citing sources in the uh, national, international security team around the president, uh, reporting shouting matches between Netanyahu and Biden over the phone um, and general atmosphere in the White House being that they consider that Netanyahu may have been a bad faith negotiator and the question, did he keep throwing in new conditions for a ceasefire deal to keep his coalition together or to keep himself in office and out of court? So extremely cynical, extremely sceptical in the White House there. Haritz has this same story saying America's exasperation with Netanyahu came too late. Extremely damning of the US president, says his handling of Gaza has been yet lax tentative and often phlegmatic, and the president was warned for months that he was being taken for a ride by Netanyahu. He was confident they could rein him in, and he was wrong, says Harrods on uh, President Biden. Now, meanwhile, let's come uh, here to France. Trouble in precarious political paradise already, Antonia? Yes, well, so it would seem. Uh, let's start with the story that um, they've got in Les Echos, uh, the dissonant duo, and that's talking about the new very hardline Minister of the Interior and the new Justice Minister, who is on is a former socialist. He's on the left flank of what is nevertheless a fairly right-wing uh, government. Uh, now, Rutaillou from the Interior Ministry fired shots at the justice system on Monday evening, uh, suggesting it was lax and soft. Uh, and saying that lots of criminal sentences go unserved, while Didier Migo, uh, the Justice Minister, was quick to remind him that his colleague should know that justice is independent in this country and that his characterisation of the justice um, system wasn't wholly accurate. They both deny that they're in a standoff, of course, but it doesn't augur well for unity within this new cabinet. Libération has another story, and that's about the government's uh, relationship with the national rally. It's source of tension. On Tuesday morning, the new finance minister uh, said he wouldn't be receiving national rally representatives to talk public finances because they're not part of uh, the Republican part of the parliament. Uh, however, national rally MPs quickly hit back. Uh, the minister was quickly upbraided by the Prime Minister, who then quickly made a call to Marine Le Pen to confirm that, in fact, his government would be cooperating with the far-right party. So, not clear if this is a sign of things to come, but certainly Barnier's ministers are being held to a strict party line and the National Rally may be excluded from the government, uh, but they carry huge weight, at least enough to frighten the Prime Minister. Yeah, more on that coming up in our next news in a few minutes' time, in fact. Finally, the scores are on the doors. This is for the uh, Bird Photographer of the Year. Why don't uh, you show some of the pictures, then, that have impressed the judges? Why not, indeed? Well, there were several categories. I'll show you a few of my favourite picks. So, in the best portrait category, best bird portrait, this is called Swanception, oh, as you beautiful. can see. A swan within a swan. <laughs> beautifully captures the natural elegance uh, of this bird. And finally, because we wait for the press review for a little bit of um, light-heartedness, uh, the comedy photo uh, that won <laughs> was Modern Dancer. Uh, it's a, taken on a family trip to Antarctica by the photographer. I'm sure you'll agree that the overall whimsy <laughs> and charm of this dancing penguin are undeniable.
It's all about penguins today on the programme. That's an amazing picture. I love both of them. Thanks for bringing them to us. Antonia Carrigan with the Press Review on France 24.